Yes. Come on. What's happening, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. KG is back and it is high spirits only. High spirits. We got the job done. So many good performances tonight, and we're gonna go through them all. Oh man, everyone, everyone's loving it. Yeah, Sinister is to hear to Rafa Unreal Gem. We got it's good to see him today, and we're gonna speak on him. Leeds United two, Nottingham Forest one. And some of the results around us today have gone in our favor too. So you know the weeks where it feels like everything's going against you? Tonight, it's all gone in our favor. I think most of it anyway. Listen, we're up to lofty heights of 13th, man. I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting dizzy. Listen, people, as you come into this victory stream, please hit a like on the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and drop your comments in after about this game today. Because it was a brilliant game anyway. I know as a neutral time, it would be a great game. But even I, I was enjoying it because we was in control for most of it. You know, it was just about concentration, keeping it tight at the back. And for the most part, we did that tonight. It was brilliant today. Brilliant, massive win. Um, yeah, Benny Hawk, tremendous, absolutely tremendous. Uh, Dave, shout out to the manager, great tactics. And once again, not going to lie to you, when I looked at that starting lineup today, I went, ah. I went, mm. I, said, mm. I saw a, a few of the usual suspects in there and I thought, ah, I don't know. And we got to speak about him. I know we've won today, but we do have to speak about one in particular. But he knows what he's doing, man. He knows what he's doing in this moment, in this kind of battle that we're in. And that's why I say, even if you do question a couple of his starting lineup sometimes, just give him time. Let's see what he's cooking because at the moment, he's got the good grace. Let me just... Let me, just get this stat here what i've just read um which is it, it's not a bad one let me let me just get this one before it goes away uh let me see let me see let me see uh javi gracia becomes the first leeds manager to remain unbeaten in his first three home top flight games in charge since alan clark in 1980 one two uh drawn one lost none you know he's earned that that leeway to say this is my lineup, and this is what I'm going to do. Even if sometimes you look at it and go, ooh. <laughs> um, ben is saying, Gracia has earned his trust. He picks the 11, 100%. Although I will say there is one person that does need to come out, and he's, he has to. Like, he has to come out for the Palace game for me. It's it's too much. To, every game now, it's, too, it's becoming too much for me to keep on looking at this guy trying to play football. He has to come out. But, yeah, on the whole, Gracia, come on. Um, a munchy toy watching that i can't tell you what the most heard phrase was but it rhymed with clucking bell <laughs> uh thomas saying he didn't enjoy that i actually did thomas i actually did and the reason why is because of javi gracia and the way that he got us set up if it was under maybe one of the two previous managers and we hold and we held holding a 2-1 lead i'd be probably a little bit more twitchy you know i'm a youtuber but i was twitching but i, I gotta say no I, I i think that when he's with him in charge, there is more of a plan. And I don't know what feed you guys are watching, by the way, but you'd never believe Paul Robinson used to play for us, you know. You'd never believe he used to play for us it, in our high time as well. And he replaced Nigel Martin games too soon, by the way. But that's a whole different story. But you'd never believe that he 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 he's a, like play for Leeds United, man. Crazy. Uh Luke saying typical relegation scrap. I hated every second of it. Yeah, I mean, you know what? The thing is, guys, we've won down. One down. We beat Palace in the next home game. I know I don't I'm not gonna look ahead too much to it, but we we win that game. We jump above Palace and we're almost in the comfy spot. Not comfy, comfy. Don't get me wrong, we're still in the relegation battle, but it's a lot more comfortable if we get the next three points at Palace. And it's doable. It's doable. Uh what is that? Tasha saying Robinson is not leads at all, he's so anti-leads. I, yeah, oh, oh, Nate, Nate, you've got onto what I was going to talk about because for me, yet again, and Furpo is not the only one we're going to speak about as having a good game today, but Furpo on the whole today, apart from that one where he should have taken a bit more time to cut it back and pick a person out, that was one where you thought, ah, Furps. But overall, Furpo was really, really good today. And any time Paul Robinson got to, to try and knock him, he was doing it. But yet there was a guy on the other side who Forrest were targeting all game, by the way, people. All game, even though Brennan Johnson plays on the right-hand side, they kept on coming down our right. And there's a reason for that. This isn't the first time you've heard me say that, but there's a reason why they keep coming down our right-hand side. And the amount of times Luke Elling was turning the ball over, 
not one mention by Paul Robinson, but Furpo, anytime he got a little thing wrong, he was on his back. But you, the problem with I have with stuff like that is because people in general, they can't curate their own thoughts. So they'll listen to Paul Robinson and go, oh, yeah, you know what? Furpo was having a real bad game. Luke Ayling was fine because Paul Robinson probably didn't say too much about him. Ayling was the problem today, not Junior Furpo. Furpo was really good today. Oh, uh, yeah, Rucker, he, yeah, well, I mean, Matthew, it could be that English bias, but it, it's just it's just crap. That's why I don't listen to commentators. And these last couple of games, I've been listening to him, and it's been driving me mad. Uh, AFV, Rucker was a class act today. Rucker was a Rolls Royce. And the reason why he was so good today, people, is because Forrest were just sitting back trying to soak up the pressure and hit us on a break. It was clear what their, their tactic was, but Rucker was dictating from deep today. He was so, so good today. And that is the passing range that I'm talking about with Ruck. And you saw with McKenny, McKenny as well. He gets a shout today. He was putting through some real fine balls. He was trying to break the lines today. He was picking it up from deep, driving forward. McKenny was really, really good today. But there's so many candidates. I haven't even talked about Jack Harrison yet. There's so many candidates today that were on the job. And this is high pressure people. You heard the Ellen Grove crowd at times as well when there was misplaced passes. You know how it is at Ellen Road when, the, when there was a, a misplaced pass. They kept going and they kept to the plan. Full credit to them today. Full, full credit. Uh, Darren, yeah, Weston, very stylish today. You'd never believe he was in the bottom three team today. You know, we started today, obviously, in the bottom three. You'd have thought we was in mid-table security the way Weston McKenney was playing today. He was, he was wonderful. Wonderful. Um, Andy saying Sinny showed his quality too. I still don't think he's 100%, but I imagine when he is, yeah. And it was funny because at the start with Sinny, a couple of his touches weren't that good. But as the game grew on, he was showing exactly what we, we, we want to see from him when he's in full flight. The ball was stuck to his feet at times. Nico Williams couldn't get, get near him. And that was another thing as well. Their, their left-hand side, Tuffalo, we was targeting that because he was clearly the weak link for Forrest. You know, he's not a Premier League defender in the slightest. So we kept going down that side, even though Nico Williams was booked um, in like 10 minutes, eight minutes. But Sinistero had just had him on toes and, and that was a part of uh, our second goal too. Just, I mean, he was just wonderful. That's what I want to see from Sinistero. Please stay fit, Sinny, and we can see more of that. You saw he didn't need... A lot of, of guidance. He didn't need to play in anybody. He made that goal himself. Ah, that, that's what I love. You know me, people. I love my ballers. I love my dribblers. I love people that have got end product with it. That was that was magnificent. Uh, Till I die saying, Paddy seemed disinterested to me. I don't feel he was trying. Uh, I don't know if he was disinterested uh, Till I die, but he, he just doesn't have that, that finishing quality. And you saw when Nottingham Forest had a mix-up from a, a free kick, two of them headed it to him. He had a free reign of the penalty box, took it down nicely. He took it down really well, but then he just scuffed it wide. I, but that that is Patrick Bamford, I'm afraid. You know, I'm sure that will probably go down as another big chance miss. But, you know, at 2-1 as well, that could have been costly if, he, if we had conceded later in the game. Thankfully, it wasn't. But... I, I like I say, and this is what I meant about my five top five and five disappointed. The reason why he doesn't go in my disappointed column is because I don't expect nothing from Patrick Bamford in that kind of area. But yeah, I mean, it, an easy storyline he could have written today was the Forest fans scoring against Forest, but we don't do the storylines, do we? We don't we don't do the storylines at Leeds. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Malachi saying, "I have a feeling we'll be comfortably twelfth place after the weekend." I hope so. I hope so. We've we've done one of the hardest bits for me today. I know that Palace, Roy Hodgson are going to come and and like park every bus possible. But we saw today, Forrest tried the same. And it wasn't like Forrest. I, I, I saw some people saying that Forrest came here for a draw. I disagree. I think they came here to win. But it was quite clear what the plan was. Anytime we lost possession or turned it over, it was out to our to our right-hand side, to Dennis, who was then going to try and pri try and probably play in Gibbs White or Brendan Johnson. To, to get the winning to get the winning goal. I think that was clearly the plan by them today. And we we stifled it today. Like we was really good today. Let's not take anything away from us. We were very good today. So many good performances out there. 
<laughs> Mark Jones, Europe, here we come. Uh, let me just get the super chats. Uh, Mr. P, shout out to you. Furpo, Rocco, Sinny, Harrison, all class today with others contributing. However, Ailing Bamford weren't up to the same standard as the rest. I agree. And I'll even throw in Aronson in there too. As, as good as the endeavour is from Aronson today, we, we lost a lot of possession when he got the ball too. I've said it before about Aronson. I do like the guy. I do. I think he's a good player, but he needs to use his stature to his advantage. He needs to be a bit more diminutive and he's not using it. He just keeps on running into players and hoping he's getting free kicks. It's not going to work in the Premier League. Uh, Brian, uh, with the Super Chat. Thank you, Brian. Man, it feels good. Let's enjoy this W. We, we are enjoying it. We are enjoying it. We're going to enjoy it today. Thank you, Brian. Um, Let's have a look. And, and Brian, yeah, another Brian stroke was class. I said on the preview, was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. I said stroke, we needed to see some, some, something better. Me as a strike fan, I haven't been impressed this season. I think he's been pretty poor, but tonight he stepped up. Stepped up in the absence of Verba today. He stepped up, man. Really good from Pascal. Getting good, important blocks in. Helping out Furpo as well. Excellent. Uh, James with a super chat. Thank you. Uh, let's all dance like Sydney to like. I haven't got those moves, I'll be honest, but if anyone else can try, please do it. Let's go. Let's go. Um, let me let me just see if I let me get into my notes. And while I'm doing that, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay. Oh, yeah. And Wraith Hart, thank you for the super thanks on the last video. Much appreciated for that support. Oh, and thank you to uh Caroline and Jim, who are new members of the channel. If you want to join the channel, memberships are in the description. Thank you for the support. Uh, let's have a look. Nathan saying, Aronson needs more upper strength, has twinkle toes, but no upper body strength. And it's about just using his size. There's been many players, by the way, that have been smaller than Aronson in the, and, and have been more um, slight with their movement. They just know how to use their body better. He just seems to try and get the, the cheap free kicks, but it's not going to work in the Prem. And, and as well, referees talk, you know, and look how many times he looks up and slaps the ground when he's on the floor. It's not working. You've got to find a different avenue, uh, Brendan, if it's going to work. And I thought that he, along with who Mr. P said, Ailing and Bamford were the, the more weaker performers today. But hey, we've got the win. That's the most important thing. Um, let's have a look. You know, oh, by the way, and if did it, I don't know if anyone saw Alan Tate on uh, the Forest bench. He used to play for us on loan for a bit, if you remember. I forgot how much that guy looks like Liam Cooper's older brother. They look so similar, man. It's 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 crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Danny here saying rock a man of the match for me, and that is saying something, Danny, because Harrison today was on it. The com when uh, when Jack Harrison is confident. That's what he gives you. And at the moment, we are getting that eight to 10 cluster of games where Jack Harrison is just on fire. He was wonderful today. Wonderful. And this is what we need from him, you know, from now to the end of the season. Hopefully he doesn't stop at any point soon. Jack Harrison was on fire today. Him and Sinny today were causing all kinds of issues for Faris. They didn't know who to go. And shout out as well, again, Furpo, who was given uh, the Forest defenders uh, another question too, because when Sinny would cut inside, Furpo would be overlapping, making Forest go, oh, which way do I go? Just a good team effort tonight, people. A good team effort. Um, uh, let me just get the super chat. Some more super chats coming in. Thank you for the support, people. Uh, Mark is saying, march on together. Let's have some drinks. Thank you, Mark. Get a super malt soon. Uh, shout out to you, Jeff. Thank you for the donation, buddy. Uh, come on, Leeds. A win now at the weekend. Would love to see Christensen for Ailing and Rutter for Bamford this weekend. Thanks for the balanced commentary. Always, Jeff. Always balanced. I always try. Uh, thank you for the support. But you know what, Jeff? You're absolutely right. And those are two changes that I would make personally, too, for that game. Um, you know, we, we let, let's talk about it. Let's, let's talk about it. Wait there, Paul here, as a Leeds fan living in and working in Nottingham, I'm actually looking forward to walking into work tomorrow. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, man. Their their first goal. Um, th there was warning signs by Luke Ayling, and we have to talk about this, people. I know, I know, we've won, but th this is about going forward too against Palace and against future teams because we started on the back foot for absolutely no reason yet again. You know, just like the Arsenal game where we can see the penalty out of nothing, no reason for it. Today there was a warning sign as well. By the way, today. Because I, I hadn't noted down before. I was like, what, what's he doing? There was a ball, a simple ball that Luke Aylin could have played to Patrick Bamford's feet. And he decides to put it in the air. And then, 
And then they broke from it. Forrest broke from that, that sequence and they got two corners from it. And from the one corner, Dennis hit the post. You know what I mean? So we could have been one nil down there. And that was from Ailing's just, it was a poor giveaway. Like just, just absolutely poor. And then, so that warn is not heeded. And then we go again, what is it? Two, four minutes later, Ailing just heading it out, just carelessly to Faris, who then break on us. And, you know, Mangala then gets his goal. First shot on target as well. Again, something that I've spoke about this season, about the first shot on target going in against us. Got to gotta clean up with that. But that was all from Ailing's mistakes. And it's not the first time. I mean, how many, how many chances is this guy going to get? Seriously, how many chances is this guy going to get to just keep on putting us behind the eight ball? It's too much. And I was just, I, was, I, I couldn't believe, I was like, ah, why? It, it's just under no pressure as well. Because it took it took a while for Faris to get bodies forward. That's how much in control we were at the time. I just don't know. And listen, you know, we, we like to give out gifts. We didn't give a gift out for Faris's poor waveform today, but Mangala, congratulations for your first English goal in uh, first goal in English football. You're welcome. You know, we'll always give out a little gift somewhere, but you didn't get the full gift. I just, I'm just, for me, I'm, I'm just starting to, it feels like at the point, at this point in time, when Luke Ayling's on the pitch and he starts, we're kind of starting with 10 men at the moment because he's kind of playing against us right now. He's kind of playing against us. It's like Benzema when Vinny Jr. years ago, I think he's playing against us. That's how it feels at this time. And listen, I know all the people there. I know he means well, but that's not good enough. We're in a battle here and we need to be focused and switch on. And for me, he's just not, he's just not very good. Let's be, let's be clear. And he didn't even have Brendan Johnson on his side. It was Emmanuel Dennis, who's been in and out of the Forest team. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just... And Nabino here, does it say how much Rasmus is trusted? Yeah. And, and you know, somebody on the on the preview said that recency bias has got me with this about asking for Rasmus. No, it hasn't. And I was quite surprised because this is a regular viewer of mine. But this is about the evidence that you see in before you. And the last few games, Ailing has been putting up stinkers one after the other. It's not just like we, we get to a game off and he's been good. He's been putting up consistent stinkers. So it's about, we always knew that there's going to be an issue at right back when the window closed. Is either going to be Ailing or Rasmus with, with Drame out on loan. So it's about, it's about utilizing the best one at the time. And right now, Ailing isn't it. That's it. Um, and, and that's it for me on, on, on Luke Ailing. You know, I've said it week after week on this. It's, it's getting tiresome, but hopefully Gracie can see it too. And, and we see a different uh, starter come uh, Crystal Palace. Uh, Andy say Ailing needs a rest. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Jake. It's not recency bias, it's form, exactly. And I've, what I've always said on here, people, with new information, your opinion should change. And that's the way it should be. You know, you can't, if you're stuck on an opinion just because you want to stay right, that makes you look like a fool. You know what I mean? Uh, so let me let me just get uh, Tommy here with the super chat no message but thank you so much Tommy big uh, support of the channel and thank you Jason who's become a member of the channel much love much love um so yeah uh McKenney McKenney Sydney and Aronson link yeah they linked it well so yeah rocket yeah oh man let, let, let's let's uh let me just go through a few of your comments here <laughs> oh man ailing and pat it's like starting with nine men yeah i know i know act and dave all guard mentality again yeah i know i know it, it, it's and, and again it's not it's not hate it's not slight it's no agendas it's about just thinking about what's the best for for the team and and that is it's simply that that's all it is gavin here nonto ready for sunday he's on the bench today maybe I think mate, if we were behind in the game, would he have come on? Possibly. But with us being ahead and, and, and pretty much being in control, people, I've got to say, I know it was a little bit frantic here and there, but I thought we was in control for most of that game. Uh, it was just about looking out for the, the breaks of, of Forrest. And at, at times it did happen. And that's another thing as well. Remember that one in the second half? Let me get, let me get down to it. Let me get down to it. Um, Furpo, 59 minutes when they, when they uh, got the ball over. And he tackles, what's, what's his name again? Is it Awaini? Awainu? I, I don't know the guy's name. Apologies to him. 
but he got a last ditch tackle on him for brilliant covering. And that was in the central defense area because we got caught on the, on the break. You know, Furpo will get slandered because easy, 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 low hanging fruit, but he was brilliant today. Uh, so what was that one there? Famous E rocker and wears straight dog. Yeah, they got that dog in him. Yeah, West Weston's got that dog in him. You, you can see that. You can see that he's got that dog in him. But Rucker today, it, you give him space like that in the midfield, and he'll just conduct the thing. And he was wasn't that good today to see Rucker passing the ball the way he was. It was ah, wonderful. You'd never believe it. when you look at how he was playing today. You'd never believe he just cost ten million from Bayern Munich. Thank you very much, Bayern. I'm so glad you got Kimmich and all them guys. <laughs> Uh, Steve Whelan saying, I hate saying this, but I was screaming at the TV for for Bamford to be taken off. I thought his touch was shocking. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> Skip saying, only two places behind Chelsea and they spend 500 million. Well, listen, I'm, I'm just going to go through tonight's results today, people, because this it, it couldn't have gone any better. Bournemouth nil, Brighton 2. So Bournemouth, home defeat there. We beat Forest 2-1. Hey. Leicester lost to Villa 2-1. And I saw their last goal. Indeed, he played it to uh, Traore, who just loved it. And like, those are the things that go for you at this time. So keep on keep on with that. Chelsea nil, Liverpool nil. A Chelsea in a relegation battle. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But now that puts us 13th, 29 games, 29 points, point per game. Oh my days, it's sickening, isn't it? But Two points above the drop zone at this point in time with Palace and next, who are just above us on 30 points. We win that game. Oh, God, I don't want to look too far ahead. I want to enjoy this one today. But if we win that game, oof, that would be very, very welcome. Let's just say that. Very, very welcome. Um, David Barker, Super Chat. Thank you. Ailing captain sets tone with bravery on the ball. Okay. Thank you for the Super Chat. Uh, Brian is saying a great place to be KG 13th. It's nice. It's nice. I wish it wasn't just two points, the, the buffer, but we'll take it at this time. We'll take it, right? SJ44, Western has stepped up when it mattered. I don't think Western has been bad for Leeds. I think he's been used in different positions that we're not getting the best out of him, but he's been good for us. And tonight, I think tonight was overall his best one. I do like when he's playing like the Bash Brothers with Tyler Adams at times, but you can see today with him getting a bit more forward, getting a bit more advanced because Forrest were allowing us to, to come onto them, pause. He was much better today. He was he was putting in balls for, in, in tight spaces as well today. Brilliant stuff from, from uh, Western. Uh, Callum is saying Steve Cooper to be sacked. He, Patrick Vieira has been linked with that job. Very, very interestingly. Um, Patrick Vieira has been linked with that Forest job. So maybe Steve Cooper is gone. And you've seen all the managerial casualties this season. We've been part of it as well, haven't we? It, it's just so much at stake in this league. So much people can't afford to go down. Just It's just too much money at stake. And it wouldn't surprise me if Forest do let go of him uh, and bring in Patrick Vieira or someone like that. But I, there was another puzzling thing that he did today, in fact, because he was making substitutions like they were going out of style. But I'm surprised he didn't take off Nico Williams because let's talk about Sinistera's goal. Um, again, Rucker conducting from deep, you know, Bamford put it to Furpo and then Sydney did his magic. And Nico Williams couldn't get near him because he was already on a yellow card, but Sydney was was toying with him anyway. And I was so quite surprised in the second half that Nico Williams didn't come off because it, it was quite clear that Sinistera was having fun and he continued in the second half. So, yeah, a, a bit odd. But, yeah, I mean, Steve Cooper's to be sacked. It is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, uh, William is saying, I think three more wins required, but it's crazy at the bottom. You know what? You know what? People keep asking me this kind of stuff, like how many more points and how many more wins. I just don't know. The league table tells you as well. Who knows? Because... It just seems like anytime somebody has a bad week, everybody else has a good one, but then it, it flips to somebody else next week and they, you know, vice versa. It just keeps on going in and out. I I, I don't know which way it's going to go. I just know that we need to take care of our business and we've done the first part today. Let's do the next part on Sunday, please. <laughs> please. Uh, Jim saying, so many options on our wings, all in form and Rutter will hit his, hit his stride soon. Yeah, I, like I say, Rutter in, in 
in spurts and especially in his last game against Arsenal looked good. But he needs more more time before we can make a full judgment on him for me. Um, and I would put him in for Bamford, like AFV saying here against Palace. I think it. I think it's going to be needed a bit more guile, a bit more of an unlocking of the player to against Palace because they're going to set up really deep. If you thought Forrest were defending today, wait until you see what Palace bring us on, on Sunday. Um, uh, NJ1 saying, Gracia has done brilliantly so far. I'm so happy for him. But I think with the takeover, Gracia moves on and leaves, move on to that next level. Love Gracia though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on that... I'm still on that kind of boat as well. And to be fair, quite a few people, I said in my preview yesterday, so many of you asking about Graham Potter and Graham and uh, Brendan Rogers, <laughs> like Grassy is not here, but I do hear you. I think that it, he's good for this firefighting job, but I'm just looking at it. I, I'll, I'll go, I'll go into it obviously in the, in the off season. And we'll talk about new managers then because he might, he might be confirmed to stay on. That's what that whole flexible contract's all about. So we'll, we'll talk about it more then, but he does seem to me like it's a short term thing and that we go in the summer and get our long-term manager, long-term coach. But he, he's doing he's doing what he's supposed to do brilliantly so far. I, I think so anyway. Oh, David, don't joke with that one. If Palace sack Harlison Leeds can get him next season, no thank you. <laughs> uh, Nate saying, Arnie Schlatt or Galado are the only options. Well, there's more options than that, um, uh, Nate, but I hear you. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I mean, with with this one, M here saying I'd rather have Gracia over Potter and Brendan, and I'm with you there. There, there is plus though to Brendan uh, Rogers. There are because he is a really good coach. But you've seen in every club that he's gone to, and maybe that's just the natural manager thing. Um, I, I suppose it would happen with Jose Mourinho too if we if we could ever get him. Um, it seems to fall apart after a little after a little while, and you know, Brendan does get a little bit prickly with some of his players. I don't know if that would work here. I'm not sure if that would really work here. We've already seen what some of these players have done to to you know coaches that have given them careers, you know, treating them really well, giving them Premier League careers, and they didn't treat him very well. So I'm not sure if you could get away with that at Leeds United. But yeah, for me, if you're talking about Gracia or, or Graham Potter, yeah, uh, keep Gracia, man. It's, it's not even close to me either. Uh... And Mark here saying it's a shame Sydney has been injury prone. He's an amazing player. That goal today was was so so good, and that that's the kind of thing we've been we've been crying out for, isn't it? Instead of us having to work so hard for our goals, like having to make the perfect pass, the perfect shot, he gives us magic, and that's what he's done. But it's just that he gets injured so much. I think they, they said that's his first goal since September, it, which is quite appalling, really overall when you see his talent level. But he's just got to stay fit. If he stays fit, he gives you more of that. That's how good he is, but we need to see more on the pitch. I, th I think he's, I think he's wonderful, man. I think he's absolutely wonderful. Uh, anybody here want to talk about? Uh, oh wait, there, Carl G here saying no. It would be a disgusting thing for the club to do to sack him if he keeps us up. Carl, I mean that that that. I mean, yeah. Listen, I know there's a lot of people that would think like that, but you got to think long term as well. And look at his record. He doesn't stay anywhere too long. Whether that's through him quitting or being sacked, there's reasons behind that. And also, do you see him here in two years' time? When you look at Leeds United in two years' time, wherever you think we'll be, do you see Javi Gracia being here at the helm? Maybe that's something uh, only you guys can answer that. I, I just don't see it personally. Theo saying the celebration. Yeah, yeah, uh, Sydney celebration was wonderful. People, let's talk a bit on uh, Jack Harrison here. Um, let's talk about Jack Harrison and, and his current form. Because this is this is we're in that Jack Harrison bit now where he is like in his bag like this is Jack Harrison confident you know even today he had a couple moments where he's looking up to the sky but instead of hiding instead of shirking he was getting back on it today this is the Jack Harrison want to see and you know why it is and people talk about the English bias earlier whenever he has a good game the commentators talk him up so you know what everyone was kind of worried that the 30 million we probably never see again once you know that Leicester move didn't happen. I'm not too sure. I think we might be able to get more if he's sold in the summer. But I can see I've seen I've seen this story before. He's having a, a blinder of a of a you know last four or five games in, in, in total, let's say that new contract is probably coming this week. Maybe the news of the new contract is probably coming this week, maybe. You know what I mean? We've seen the Leeds PR before. Um yeah, Darren, this is the Harrison we want to see every week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That that one hundred percent. We are Lee saying uh, Harrison is a big game play. He shows up when we need him, and I got to say as well for his goal. Let's talk about his goal. Um, you know, Kayla Navas, who since our game, by the way, he's turned into a regular goalkeeper again. He was Superman against us in the first game we played them. Since then, he's been just a regular keeper again. And I got to say, for Jack Harrison to have the wherewithal to stay on side, to anticipate the the shot being spilled from Rucker, good strike from Rucker again. And he spilled it and he, he stayed on side to tap it, to, to stroke it in. Wonderful. Good anticipation. That's something, again, that we haven't been very good at overall this season. That's getting on that second ball, that second guessing a mistake happening. Jack Harrison did that today. So full credit to him today. Full, full credit. Uh, Frank say never been so frustrated with a player, but he was brilliant today. Brilliant description, Frank. That That's that's Jack Harrison in a nutshell. Um. Uh, Leeds United, John here. Shout out to you, John. The most disliked players were Furpo and Harrison, and now they're heroes. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go with dislike. I mean, there's very few people I dislike, I'd say. There's some people that just make me wince. But yeah, they're, they're two of our better performing players and have been for a little bit now. Jack, you know, shorter than Furpo. But yes, you're right. They're, they're two players right now that are contributing very, very well to Leeds United. They, they're doing it right now. They're stepping up when we need them in this crunch time where... Managers are being sacked. Teams are picking up points here and there. They're, they're, they're coming through for us. Yeah, I'm always going to put these up. We are Leeds. Paul Robinson, the hate. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, I never want to hear that guy again. Never again. I still maintain he got in the first team at Leeds way too soon. Nigel Martin shouldn't have gone out. But that's a, Like I say, that's a whole different other like show. That's a whole different other show. Um, <laughs> fraudulent <laughs> Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Stephen Bourne saying, Best team won from a Forest fan. We're down a manager gone soon. Uh, Stephen, uh, appreciate that. And you know, you know what it is, Stephen. It was quite clear what you were trying to do today. And I can see with you games coming up, I think you've got a real tough three coming up. If, if you, if I've got that right, I think it was a clear case of you trying to get three points here and move on to the next three games. But I think you're your uh, chairman has been looking for a reason to probably cut Steve Cooper, and this may be it. Um, even Brennan Johnson today, I love I love Brennan Johnson. He's a real good player, but he was getting frustrated today, and he was getting involved in little spats here with Mark Rucker here and there. It, it was a frustrating night for you guys, but I've got to say I'm delighted, man. I, I know it's not good for you, but I'm delighted. Uh but uh, you know what? I, I, again, with that as well, Steve, you know, the Forest fan, if you're still here, it's too... I know there's games are running out, but it's too soon for anybody to say they're going down. I think even Southampton, who are the bottom team, have still got a little bit in them to say, maybe we're not down yet. I think it's just too tight right now. That's why every win, every point is just important. Um, and we are Leeds just saying we're three worse teams than Forest. <sighs> yeah, it's just, it's, it's insane. And please, next season, I don't want to be involved in this again. I don't. I mean it with all my heart. I couldn't mean it anymore. I don't want to be involved in this, this battle anymore. It, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> uh, uh, Gavin here. Oh, Because I, I don't listen to him often, Gavin. So I'm going to take your word for it. Uh, Paul Robinson is always controversial, trying to be relevant, always skip his nonsense. It sounded like it to me. Uh, <laughs> Nate say, recency bias here, so we win 7-0 against Paris against palace tremendous oh man oh that's another talking point and and this is for the people that uh that love liam cooper and think that he should be in and again her fraudulent commentary on there about i'm surprised liam cooper's not back in there because we lack leadership at the back what they're talking about man like seriously what why why did they just talk <laughs> i know the commentary what are they talking about though and also as well by the way Paul Robinson, who, who I, I don't know if he watches Leeds a lot, but he was saying that we only play one way. Has he not been watching us under Javi Garcia? There's literally been a different plan for nearly every game. Again, just they just talk for the sake of talking. Um, but Joe Mark is saying, thanks, Javi, for not putting Liam Cooper back in. How do people feel about that? And this is for the Liam Cooper fans, because I know that there, there's still some about. Are you are you upset that now he is definitely like, out of out of favor because it was Pascal yet again. Pascal came in for Arsenal. He came in again tonight at home. 
we, you know, Verba's not there. You would think that Liam Cooper being the actual club captain would be here. Are, are you guys upset with that or are you okay with it? Because for me, you know me, I've been, I've been fine with it for over two years. So I've been waiting for this day. <laughs> I never thought it would come, but it seems like it's here. It seems like it's finally here. Ishtar saying Cooper is another nice bloke. He's a great guy, absolutely great guy. But in terms of Premier League defender, he is not. Um, Michael uh, Michael saying Cooper, sadly, for the end for him. Verber is the leader of that defensive unit. He currently is. He definitely is. Gavin saying Pascal ahead of Coops now. Yeah. Uh, Michael, though, saying, is he still nursing injury? And, and that's another thing as well. It could be that he's injured and, and can't get back in. But you know with Javi Grassi, he's not going to let us know. So he could be injured, but he's on the bench. So if there was, I mean, just say every centre-back went down, you know, very rare it happens, but it does. Actually, it happened to Forest this season, didn't it? They had two centre-backs injured in the first 10 minutes in one game. But let's just say that happened. He would he would have to come on, you'd think. So I don't know if he's carrying an injury, but at this point in time, we've got to go by the, the evidence that we've got, and Pascal is getting ahead of him. Uh, Pete, yeah, Pete here saying knew Cooper was done when Javi was talking about how he can be a leader off the pitch. Good point. Good point. Although, you know, Jesse Marsh did say that at one point as well. And look what happened there. <laughs> uh, yeah, Yun Min saying, in my honest opinion, the title charges are next season. <laughs> Tremendous. Tremendous. Gavin, you keep, you know what, Gavin, I'm going to put an end to your poor jokes here. Tyler Roberts close to fitness, KJ. Even if he is close to fitness, Gavin, he's going back to QPR. That's the deal. He's come back here for fitness reasons only. He, We will not see Tyler Roberts this season or ever again, okay? He's done. So, Gavin, keep those jokes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Tasha, you say, Liam Cooper, thank you for your service. Now time to move on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time Gavin I always see it man. Uh, Paul saying I agree about Coops but Bamford isn't a Premier striker, either, Premier League striker either both in the same mold for me sadly yep I'm, I'm with you there and yeah I mean Luke here saying Christian even came on at the end to over Cooper I mean it, doesn't it tell it does tell you for me it does tell a bit of a story now I think that you know, the, under Javi Gracia anyway, I think that that is it for Liam Cooper, unless, like, in case of real emergency. But, hey, we'll see. Frank Siegel, would you go through with the McKenney deal? 100%. Yeah. Um, I would hope that maybe they could, like, you know, have a little conversation and say, well, I know we said 33, but, I mean, could we get it down a little? You know, barter a little bit? But I, I would, I would, I would, I do like, I do like what Western McKinney can do a lot. But at the same time as well, uh, Frank, it's not just on us; it's up to Western as well. And is he? It, does he want to stay here? Does he want to carry on here? He's not been played in his more more favoured positions overall, so it would be interesting to see. But yeah, I absolutely would. Depend on on our financial situation, because obviously by then we're hoping that the 49ers will be in charge. Uh, and they would have helped facilitate still. I know and Andre Rajazani made it clear that he was a big part of the Western McKenney deal, but deals going forward, it's going to be the 49ers. And if they feel that he's a good piece for the team, yeah, I would, I would go 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 through with it. Uh Tasha though saying sorry, KG McKenney not worth 33. I I, I do hear that. I, I do think that the price is high, but at the same time as well, it's about what the club deems he's worth and if they feel that he's worth 33 from what he's done so far and what he could do for us in the future then I, i'd be happy with it but i i understand that everyone's not on that page and i, and I do get it as well because 33 is a very very high number uh michelle lee uh saying what did i tell you gagey 2-1 you did michelle well done was a great lunch break for me for me here in vancouver yeah shout out to you man and shout out to everyone watching wherever you are around the world love to see it um John Luck saying Bamford is a one season wonder, and even that season was a fluke. Hey, I've said before, John, that I've got to be careful because you can't say that word. That Chauvid season, I, I do put a star next to it for a lot of stuff, and even for my guy LeBron James, who won a, a ring in that in that Chauvid year. Hey, man, it's a, it's a bit techy. I don't really talk about that ring too much for LeBron James. You know what I mean? I, I talk about the previous ones, not too much about that one, but, you know, it is what it is. 
Um, uh, Kate, though, is saying, really good point. McKenney is a known quantity now and really has settled in. I think he settled in wonderfully, but I do get it, though, with the 33. That's why I hope that they, maybe they could negotiate with Ju Juventus a bit. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, the Marching On podcast. Yeah, Mr. Dodo, you have to. If Otherwise, YouTube just, they lock your video off, man. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, the Marching On podcast. Uh, wouldn't you take Lavia or War Prowse? Oh, God, man. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. Let me continue. For 33, instead of Saints, uh, instead of if Saints go down or Yates from Fries or any of the Leicester kids. Oh, my days. Uh, no marching on podcast. Lavia, 100%. But Lavia is going to a, a different level. He, he's been scouted by back to Man City and also Chelsea, too. So I think Lavia is going to move on to that next step, regardless. Ward Prowse for me, no, no. <laughs> I've said it so many times on here. The free kicks and all that stuff don't impress me. They don't impress me. Listen, I speak to Southampton fans that tell me the, the thing that I see when he plays. He doesn't do much outside of that. I know what he does is effective in terms of the free kicks and corner and the corner take, and I get all that, but he's a very, very meaty midfielder. And I'm sorry, but when you're English and 28 years old and you haven't been able to get that move to the next step, even to a Tottenham, there's a reason for that. And it's past people like me, just fans, there's scouts and there's, and there's people that have said, this guy isn't worth it. Save your money. There's a reasons why. And I'm not saying that we're on the level of the, the top six clubs, but I'm saying there's a reason why he's 28 years old and still at Southampton. And I don't think he's doing the Matt Letizia thing where he's doing a one club thing. I don't. I just think that outside the free kicks, you always see it. Or he, he doesn't get spoken about until he scored a free kick. You never hear about Ward Prowse general play. You know what I mean? You never hear about his general play. It's free kicks and that's it. Oh, wow, what a free kick. Now nah, it doesn't do nothing for me. Uh, yeah, Andy Shaw, talking of free kicks and corners, it's nice to see some of ours clear the first man. Thought we was much better with them today. Not perfect, but again, I thought the distribution of those set pieces were really good today. Uh, yeah, Joe, yeah, if Leicester were to go down, Madison's clearly going to a top six. He's Now, James Madison's got the talent. He's got it all. He can take corners, free kicks, but his general play, the way he draws plays to him, draws fouls. James Madison, he's the real deal. Not no James Ward Prowse. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> right. Let me just get some comments from Javi Gracia um, as he's finished the game. While I'm doing that, please hit the uh, like on the video. Best way to support the channel. And it's free. And it helps me out. So thank you so much. And thank you for the super chats and the new members today. Let me get what Javi Gracia said today. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. Okay. Gracia on his impact so far, 10 points, five games. I do my job. The protagonists are the players. That sounds... Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So he, he's basically passing the praise on to the players. Uh, very humble. Very humble. Um, he's delighted with that. Said Leeds should have killed the game. I'm conceding the first. The reaction was perfect. He was really proud. Talking up the defending and resilience. The key to the game was the way we focused. And that's what I said at the start and why I wasn't so worried uh, about conceding a goal. He just, th there's something in his system and defensive ways that just give me a bit of comfort. Even in a close game like this, he just gives me a bit of calm, a bit of focus with uh, with Javi Grassi in the way that he does things. So, I'm I'm complete with him there. So good good stuff from Javi Gracia. Keep it rolling, man. Crystal Palace next. Uh Millen Chip here. Oh, Millen Chip. Go boo. Everyone boo Millen Chip. Let's not get carried away. We are two points after drop. Boo Millen Chip in the chat. Come on now, Millen Chip. We did our job today. Come on. <laughs> uh Mark saying over 900 in tonight, Cage. Let's hit the like button. Yeah, please do that for me, please. Uh, David saying, I agree. I felt okay at one nil down. I got to say, I don't, f I didn't feel good at one nil down. I felt annoyed because of the way that it was conceded. Um, but I, I didn't think that the game was over. Not, not this one, you know, this was much different to Arsenal, uh, much different to Arsenal. I didn't, I didn't feel that we was, the game was over, but it was unnecessary, wasn't it? But yeah, once, once we got back into it, I felt that we could go on to win it easily as well. Uh, not quite, Gavin. Not quite. I'll be gone in just in a bit. In a bit. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else of note. Is there any other notes that you want to get from um, 
from today's game. Matt Davis saying Gracia's mentality monsters. He's he's instilled it, and it was high stakes. I can't I can't put that uh, out enough. It was high stakes today under the Ellen Road lights, and they did it. They turned up. They turned up. No complaints. No complaints. Uh, Perry Towers, uh, thank you for the super sticker. Thank you so much for the support. Uh, Liam B, great comments tonight, KG. I love the way everyone enjoyed the night. Thanks, Leeds Forever March on together, 100%. I just wish we had more of these nights. That, this, that would be nice o- over the season. It'd be nice if we could have some more. Maybe next season we'll get them. But yeah, we've got to enjoy this. We're, we're in a battle, people. So every victory, every point, we've got to enjoy it. Well, you know, in, in context, because if we draw against Palace and it's a poor, poor game, maybe not enjoy that one, but... Yeah, no, enjoy the wins. We have to. We have to enjoy the victories. Uh, Karen here saying, uh, Javi always praises the players and the fans. A lovely, humble man. He certainly does. Um, just seeing if I've got any other any other things that I need to say. Um, yeah, Forrest said that. Said that. Yeah, you know, talked about Paul Robinson enough. <laughs> talked about him enough. Yeah, no, nah, I've got all my notes out for, for that game. Everything done. Um, Bowie Doctor here saying, Bowie Doctor, sorry. So chuffed we won March and I'm 100%, 100%. Uh, Gil, Gil won, uh, I hope that's right. Gil won Tortoise. Okay, tremendous. Uh, most cheerful and relaxed Leeds fans have been for six months. <laughs> Rejoice. <laughs> Oh man. And yeah, JT, uh, this is something as well. JT 1968 saying we are going into Palace game with confidence 100%. They're, they're going to be without Zaha too, by the way, which is huge. We all we all know how much he means to uh, Palace. I know they've got other threats in there, especially Elise. I like Elise a lot. Eze looks like he's back in the in in the starting lineups for them again after being left out for a bit. But we're going in there with with confidence and not only us as as um as the players but the fans will too the fans will be buzzing for the game on sunday whereas if the result wasn't as good today it's probably a little bit on edge and you've you felt ellen road if you've been to ellen road when it's been a bit tense you know how that can be but it's going to be bouncing it's going to be bright it's going to be good on sunday isn't it so everyone's going to go into this past game on top of the world and let's hope that we can replicate today if we can do that we are laughing um yeah every everyone will be sleeping happy yeah herloff uh thank you for the the donation thank you so much uh herloff i hope i've said that right thank you so much uh murder ball 74 we might even collect three points from liverpool we will be sitting on 35 points if we do that's not out the realm of possibility have you seen liverpool lately <laughs> and we beat them we've beaten them away i know that doesn't mean that we'll beat them at home don't get me wrong i'm not saying it that's very simplistic but i'm saying it's not the impossible task that it was, you know, two years ago where you're thinking, oh, Liverpool. I, I, I think there, there is a way that they could be got, especially with Javi Garcia um, doing the tactics here. So we'll we'll see. We'll see. And David here, yeah, no sign of a Leedsy tonight. And that was important today. We saw yesterday, I, I told you in the preview, didn't I? Don't rely on Tottenham because they're Spursy. They're, they're, they're Spursy and there's Leedsy, just at two different levels. But we saw Spursy yesterday against Everton. They literally 1-0 up, 10 men. Everton have got 10 men, and they couldn't hold on to it. I mean, th- there you go. That That is Spursy. But tonight, we didn't do a Leedsy thing today. Wonderful. Uh, uh, wonderful, isn't it? Uh, Prasad here with the Super Chat. Thank you, Prasad. Uh, KG, greetings from not-so-sunny California. Love your channel. We played well, but we should have scored more. How did Bamford miss March on together? Yeah, Prasad, I know. I'm afraid that's a, a, a running theme. It, it, it it's not a surprise to me. It's not a surprise to me. It shouldn't really be a surprise to anybody else, but he took it down well, but the finish was atrocious. I mean, it was it was borderline. It was horrible. <laughs> it, was a, it was a horrible miss, But I, and I hear you. But hopefully Rodrigo's getting fit. He's still not 100% fit, but it, as he gets fitter, we need him to start the, the, the games for me up front. It, it, he's just a better finisher, and it's quite clear as well. Uh, yeah, Ian, in, in regards to Spurs, biggest joke of the so-called Big Six. It's shocking. Absolutely shocking, man. I mean, 
that that's why that's why it kind of hurt when um when we didn't when we didn't hold on to beat him. I mean, we know what the reason was for that. You know, Jesse Marsh took off Mark Rucker and put Luke Ayling on, who was like a musical statue in that game. And you know, if we if we had just left our midfielder on, we would have possibly just sort seen that victory out. But Ben Tacor had too much run of the the game once Rucker went off. But we should have beaten them away. We really should have. We should have taken three points. But hey, past games. Let's let's not go over it. But yeah, in regards to them. They are one of the worst big six teams. Out. Yeah. Nate uh, with the super chat. Nantor Cine on the left. Um, ooh. Um, as Cine's getting fitter, you could put Cine there and then maybe move Nanto in the Aronson role. I'd probably do that because I think Nanto, I think as long as Nanto can run at players, I think he's he's effective. I don't think Nanto should play up front. I don't believe that. I don't... I, I know he, he finishes well, but for me, his best attribute is when he's running at players, taking players out. And I think he could still do that. And you've seen when people play centrally, they drift off to the right and left. And I think Nanto will probably still do that with Sinistera there. But it would be nice to get them both on the pitch, wouldn't it? If you've got Sinny on the left, Nanto in the Brendan Aronson role, he can easily play that role for me, in my opinion anyway. Let me know if you, if you agree with that. Uh, Mr. P... Uh, yeah, Vega saying Willie at 10. Yeah, 100%. Mr. P, Super Chat. Thank you again, Mr. P. Uh, there's Leedsy, Spursy, and now Bam Dorsey. What's that? <laughs> Am I missing something? Bam Dorsey. Is that Bamfordsy? Is that supposed to be an F, Mr. P? I'm, I'm going to correct your spelling for you if, if that is it. Yeah. There's Leedsy, Spursy, and now Bamfordsy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the donation, Mr. P. Um. Let's have a look. Yeah, Joe, uh, Joe, Joe just saying about Somerville's finish at the end. Yeah, it wasn't good either. <laughs> uh, David Jewell here saying, was checking in on the match between Sleep here and, and us. Now need to capitalize the momentum 100%. Now, listen, people, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, this has been brilliant. This has been brilliant today. Wonderful chat today. You guys have been brilliant. The team was excellent tonight. Can't ask for any more. Leeds United 2, Nottingham Forest 1. We move on to Palace. I'll be back at some point, maybe tomorrow, Thursday. Um, definitely back for the press conference when we preview the Palace game. Turn on the notification bell. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Drop the likes on the video and drop your comments in afterwards. This has been brilliant. Leeds, we go on. 13th place, people. Enjoy it. Peace out.